Hello and welcome to Airmold Meadows, your one-stop channel for all things RC and crafts. Today we're going to be, um, uh, we're working on part three of a multi-part video dealing with the uh, QNAM Nova and the Cheerson CX-20. Uh, this first three videos are dealing with uh, the plug-and-fly version and uh, how to install the receiver. The first two videos dealt with the pulse width um, installation uh, type. Uh, basically, it was really the same thing with just uh, slight variations on how you install the, um, the, the uh, servo wires. Uh, but for the, the PPM video today, we're talking a significantly different um, method of wiring the, uh, the quad up. And I'd save that for last so I can throw the lid on and then uh, we're all done. Um, for those of you that have uh, gone to the Hobby King website, their instructions, and I, I'll, I'll uh, show you a bit of picture of, of uh, in, in detail after this first part as to what he was describing on the PPM installation on the product he had. It doesn't match this product or the uh, instruction sheet that I will detail in more, um, uh, that I will provide more detail on in a few minutes. So uh, he had jumped pins one and two and then put his uh, uh, servo connector on the third. Uh, this is a capture of the Hobby King uh, video dealing with this installation and showing the, their jumper setting. Um, that didn't work. Uh, basically, it's as we have in the instructions here, at least for my quad, which is really jumping pins two and three with the servo wire on pin one. And that provides the signal to the... Uh, to the uh, receiver. This is the layout that uh, worked uh, for me uh, and there'll be a link to this diagram uh, with this video uh, but I in order to uh, connect my PPM line which was on number one I had to jump pins two and three uh, with a, just a computer uh, uh, short uh, jumper and that worked fine uh, as before um, you just ignore uh, the lights and the GPS, uh, those are reserved, and we can talk about these other uh, available signals sometime uh, in the future. Uh, so let's, let's take a little bit closer look at that. It's very hard to see, so that's why the diagram is a bit better. Uh, we have uh, the uh, servo connection on pin 1, and we have a jumper, I don't know if you can see it in there, a jumper on the signal line, on the signal rail, between pins 2 and 3. That's how that uh, uh, changes the uh, configuration to know that it's running on PPM and not PWM. And then I simply have one wire that comes out to my receiver and this will be jumped, now this is FR Sky, uh, the D8R Plus or D8R, uh, and I have to jump 3 and 4 on the signal lines and then my, um, my servo connection goes on pin 1. But your product may be different. If you're dealing with uh, PW, uh, PPM for some other uh, manufacturer, you may have different instructions altogether. That's it. There's, there's nothing more complicated than that. Again, making sure that you have your power line uh, onto, your, um, onto your receiver. And I, again, I'm using pin uh, uh, channel 8, and that's going to power our uh, flight controller. And of course, I've put on a telemetry, my voltage telemetry, on the side here so that until I get more advanced telemetry on the unit, I want to know my voltages when I'm flying. Uh, that uh, I soldered uh, directly onto the flight controller board, uh, and that's going to give me my voltage. As with the uh, default and standard PWM installations, uh, we have to go into Mission Planner uh, in order to uh, set up our... Uh, set up our uh, our quad the the difference is, is that there's no settings in here that i could find that actually sets ppm uh so it's obviously uh, the jumper that controls whether it's ppm or not but once you install ppm if this is your first install go into mission planner touch nothing else other than uh going into the setup and then going into the uh the uh, mandatory hardware and going into the uh, radio calibration and go in and make sure now when you do PPM everything should be set here perfectly 
There should be no need to change other than the fact that you should go in and calibrate your stick, but you should not have to uh, reassign. The one tip that I want to give you is that all of your switches, all of your switches are going to be active. So five is what we have programmed on for your flight modes, but switch six, seven, and eight will also be active. So you want to make sure that they're not doing something you don't want them to do. In other words, doing a flip or doing something else. Anyway, I would disable those uh, six, seven, and eight uh, in your radio, uh, and then proceed to uh, do the calibrations, making sure that you're um, going to all the uh, uh, going all going to all the extreme values, and then clicking it when done. But checking your switches, and like I said, I, just to be safe, deactivate six, seven, and eight so that it's not programmed for something that you don't want it to do. Uh, now you're done and you're ready to fly. Well, I hope you enjoyed this series of videos on the, uh, the first three videos on the uh, QNAM Nova. Um, uh, like I said, I've, I've fired it up in all of the configuration. It works fine, there's, there's no problem with it. Uh, but now it's uh, with the three videos out, uh, we'll be doing our next video, which will be dealing with the plug and fly version. And we'll show you a bit of flight video uh, and do a bit of comparison on the two. So looking forward to seeing you next time at Emerald Meadows. And if you enjoyed these videos, please subscribe. Uh, that'll that'll uh, certainly motivate us to do more videos. So thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.